there was there's this guy called a uh, footballer. It was a football called uh, Dalian Atkinson. Yeah. So um, he was he murdered or like he was killed and when was yeah. it? So he was killed in 2016 by yeah. two police officers, two white police officers, and um, like I've I've been seeing people trying to excuse his death because his dad's actually the one who called the police on him. Apparently he wasn't in the right frame of mind. He was just, you know, acting a bit out of character. So they called the police and both of the police officers claimed that they felt so threatened by him that Mm -hmm. this was all they could do to kind of, well, killing him was the only way to defuse the situation, which made absolutely no sense for me. Um, I feel like um, when you you actually look into the case, it's crazy because you just see it as, oh, two white police officers. Little do people know that they were actually a couple. So they were girlfriend and boyfriend at the time. I don't know why they're working together because I don't feel like that should be allowed. You shouldn't but, because um, um, just emotionally, like... Exactly, exactly. So that's what a lot of people are saying. A lot of people are saying her boyfriend has tasered him twice. No, once he didn't go to the ground. Tasered him again, didn't go to the ground. Tasered him one more time, he's gone to the ground. And then um, he then proceeded to kick him twice in the head. For what reason, we don't know. And then she's gone and got her baton and has just started battering him. And um, yeah, a lot of people are saying that she did that out of emotion because she's now seen um, like her boyfriend like suffering and struggling. So she's gone and done this now. Um, and it's like, once he's on the ground, once that taser got him to the ground, he did not need to be battered like that. Yeah. To the point but how was he dying. struggling? If- if he was already on the ground. Exactly. Yeah. They weren't struggling and that's why this whole case is going on. And I feel like it's, it's so, so sad, like the guilt that his dad, I think his dad's passed away now, not 100%. But when the, the last statement I see from his dad was when Dalian died, which was 2016, and he was 85. So if yeah. he's still alive now, he'd be what, like 91. Um, but that must really have sat on the dad's conscience because he's called the police officers there to help defuse the situation yeah. and they ended up killing his son like yeah. he didn't want that to happen do you know mm-hmm. what i mean so um yeah i just feel like the it's not being covered that much like i didn't hear anything about his Neither case did I. No. yeah it's only one of my followers reached out to me telling me to cover it and i looked it up and i was like wow like why have i not heard of this i've heard of george floyd like obviously this, i feel like because we saw him yeah um, die that's why it really touched our hearts but if we saw Damien's murder it would be everywhere right now yeah. and i don't see anything about his murder unless i go and search for it myself and even when i do there's not a lot um online about it but um, the trial is literally happening right now um and i just keep thinking like due to the lack of media coverage they may even just get off the hook or just get a light sentence yeah. because no one's pressuring them that much because wow. i kept thinking like the man who killed um, George Floyd, um, Derek, I think it's Derek, Derek Chauvin. Yeah, Derek Chauvin, Chauvin. Yeah. yeah. He, um, I don't feel like he would have been um, prosecuted. I don't feel like he would have gone to jail if there hadn't been such an outcry. If yeah. that was a court on record, on record and um, the, the whole world didn't go crazy, he probably wouldn't be in jail right now. So that's what I'm feeling like with this case. Um, Daniel Atkinson's case just may not be served, but I really hope it is because what they did was just straight up wrong. Yeah, but do you know the current state of the trial at the moment? Do you know when it's going to be ending as well? Um, I'm not 100% sure when it's ending, but it's been going on for a while now. It's been maybe about five to six weeks now. Yeah. Um, but the, the female police officer, her name's Mary, she um, basically said that she felt there was nothing else she could do in that situation. She felt like everything they did was completely justified. And I just find that crazy because from the second he hit the ground, he didn't need to um, be kicked anymore. Yeah. Um, there was even blood found on um, the other officer, PC Monk. There was um, blood found on his boot which was so like it's just i feel like the way he died was just so like dehumanizing to the point where there's no way to justify it there's no way to say what happened there was okay especially if he wasn't in the right frame of mind he just needed the right care he didn't need to be treated like he was a criminal you know like he'd done something wrong he hadn't done anything wrong he wasn't in the right mental state so he needed people who were gonna treat him like the vulnerable person that he was um so yeah yeah, no, that's incredibly sad and it just just goes to show as another reason why, you know, the UK is still racist and hasn't gone anywhere and also 
the fact that just because something hasn't been filmed, unfortunately, he's not getting the right coverage that it should be. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing with the uh, the Breonna Taylor yeah. situation as well with George Floyd. Like, I feel like um, I feel like when we can, and if we're ever experiencing something like that, is always key. I feel to take your phone out and start filming in it because yeah. it could do a lot more. Like, no matter what people say about oh, you should call the police or you should intervene to help. In actuality, filming it is actually going to do so much more because that's ultimately going to, you know, that might be the, the ultimate decider to put in the um, the um, the killer, the murderer in jail, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, like definitely, because from everything that we've seen thus far, having a recorded video has helped like for the most part rather than rather than if you didn't record like because yeah it's just like seeing something like this hearing something about this is like why would you not want to after seeing george floyd and just imagine if like george floyd's killing wasn't recorded Mm. like this guy just would have been off the hook but they already know that if they didn't, if they was to let this guy off the hook, they'll just be carnage, they'll be yeah. outraged, they'll be rioting until the end of time because we've clearly seen this Debit Chauvin kill this guy by putting his knee on his neck for nine minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and there's been cases like this throughout history of this happening of mm-hmm. police murdering like black men, just black people, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, with this situation here, like, and this was in 2016 as well, like, very, very recently, and the fact that I didn't hear anything about it is shocking. Yeah. It's very, very shocking, because you know, like, if this was recorded, like, the whole world would be speaking mm-hmm. about it, just due to just the nature of what happened, and the fact that it's getting no coverage is just shameful to me. Mm-hmm. Even the trial, like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, the trial's happening right now. I ain't heard one person speak on it. Literally. Like, what's going on with that? And you know what I mean? Like, I'm here. I'm hearing a lot of people saying, "Afford, you know, Black Lives Matter." How could you not speaking about this? Exactly. Like, like this is something yeah. that you're behind. This is the movement that you're following, and you're not really speaking out on these injustices. So, mm-hmm. like, come on, like, we need to do better by putting more stories like this in the public eye, as well as you know, focusing on you know, like popularized killings like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor like there's just so much more we need to focus on and I feel like that should be where our focus is right now is just give, shedding more light onto these matters which is not being put out there otherwise it's just only going to continue isn't it yeah and that's why I keep saying that the UK is not innocent because I feel like when we look at Black Lives Matter it's always American cases like a lot of people can't name black people who've died in the in the UK and it's not because the numbers are small it's because there's not a lot of media coverage on yeah. it and we're just not seeing it and it really is happening here and it's just more subtle that's all it is it's just a little bit more subtle yeah. but it's happening and um, yeah I'm, I'm screaming the UK is not innocent until they actually are yeah so, yeah because yeah, there's nothing that the UK have done to prove otherwise exactly like literally like, everything they've done like we speak about this for, for days but it's like everything they've done just actually goes against them being innocent yeah literally like everything so it's like man it's like when we were gonna see the end of this is it like police brutality is there something in the system like like, like what's going on because from what you might see on social media you might be like okay cool like no guns it may seem like the police are handling situations a lot better than they are in the u.s but even that being said like it's very it's, it's very like case by case mm-hmm. really because like okay cool you had an all right situation with the encounter with the police cool but you know um henry down the road he didn't and mm-hmm. now he's dead or now he's in jail for something he didn't do mm-hmm. so it's like like cool like we can all say everything's all blessed for us from our point of view but for somebody else's that's not always the case especially with this kind of um um what's this called is um this cognitive dissonance Mm. so where like 
somebody just might mentally feel like they're superior and then they'll just show in their actions, right? So, like, you just gotta be, like, you just gotta be wary of, like, certain issues that's happening that we're not personally experiencing and we can't just, you know, disregard it because of that. Yeah. And, yeah, it's just, it's just so sad, literally, man. It's just, it's just sad, man. I just... Mm -hmm. Like obviously, I just want one day for it just to all end in it, but obviously there's just a whole massive hill to climb before we get there. Mm. But it's funny though because my dad made me think about things in like a different perspective because he did say to me like, slavery was what like around three hundred years ago or so, um, and black people yeah, not really. Well, when it started. Um, it basically ended like what eighteen sixty five, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so but even though it was still happening, like I think officially, officially it had ended. Um, I forgot the guy's name. Was it? Um, was it Lincoln? Abraham? I forgot if Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, but it was still happening like yeah, illegally, really end, legally, yeah, yeah. Really end legally it ended, and then illegally people were still running plantations and. Because they'll be saying, oh, okay, we're not, we don't have the plantation anymore, but they still were having it. Yeah, they so had they it there, and they said, we're going to pay you, but they paid them basically buttons. Yeah, so they yeah, were cool. still slaves, essentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but what my dad basically was saying to me is that it happened, and then black people, only we only really started to get rights when you think about it in around, what, 70 years ago or so. Slavery ended in 1865. For a whole hundred years, it was a matter of fighting to just be viewed as a human. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then um, as bet between the 60s, 70s, 80s, that's when things started to pick up a bit more for us and, you know, Civil no segregation. Movement, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think, like, when you think about it in that perspective, 60, 70 years ago, it isn't that far away. It's, yeah. it's, it wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. So really and truly, we're still at the start of rebuilding ourselves. Exactly. Our parents were born during that time period. Exactly. Well. So we're still at the start of rebuilding ourselves. So we can't expect things to just change overnight. But we're kind of, what, a quarter of the way there. And I believe my great, great grandchildren will have a completely different experience of life than I'm having right now. Um, and it's not like my life right now is you know, crazy bad and stuff, but um, there's still so much more to go and there's things I've experienced in life that I shouldn't have had to experience for yeah. the colour of my skin. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Like, and the fact is that during that period as well, like, so many black people died, like, it's crazy that mm -hmm. even stories you don't even hear about, like, we hear about, like, Emmett Till, Black mm -hmm. Panthers, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, even, like, Sam Cooke, like kind of all these people would be assassinated but then there's so many other stories that even happen in america and you just be like wow like like 50 black students in like a mm -hmm. container and they were burnt to death and it's just it's just craziness yeah. and then and then you also have um and i don't know if this is true or not but they you know you're saying there's only like there's only been 60 70 years since you know civil acts the civil act um, movement and segregation and stuff that they use. If you see, if you Google like Martin Luther King, and then maybe if you Google uh, maybe even Winston Churchill or you know uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, the pictures will come up, and a lot of the pictures of Martin Luther King are in black and white, but a lot of the ones of JFK are in color. Mm. Now, yeah. you know, I've heard a lot of theories about them using you know black and white images of Martin Luther King to show, to create this false illusion that this, this was years ago, this was ages ago, centuries ago, that, you know, but then, yeah, yeah, then they use colour for like, you know, just, you know, white, popularised white figures, yeah. but why is it with, with anything focused on, you know, the struggle of black people and the hardships of that, why is that all in black and white? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Like it was so long ago and it really wasn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just just creating this like this this illusion almost that it was years ago that we should get over it, but really and truly, no, because our grandparents was going were living exactly. through the, the and hardships. His children are still alive today. Yeah. Like, how could it be that long ago if they're yeah. still alive? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I guess the hope is now is that, as you said, your kids, you know 
live better lives but even then it's, it's just like even then even though the world at that time hopefully looking at the way things are going will be a lot better for us as black people you are still going to hear cases like this sprinkled around because it's very as i said it's very case by case mm -hmm. so even though maybe the majority of black people at the time might be treated fine there might be a situation where you know an unfortunate situation that that black person may find themselves in which ends up getting them killed or arrested so it's obviously to get to that place where it's not happening this you know obviously not going to see it during our lifetime our lifetime but like i think working anything i feel that definitely has been progress like i can't say that it hasn't been progress but then again at the same time i can't be disrespectful to say there's been like the progress has affected everybody because certain people are suffering from those issues that was happening in the 60s mm -hmm. depending on where they live or just how they've been treated in their personal life in it yeah but i think just overall as far as you know us getting rights even women getting rights um and even you know black gay women getting rights as well like that's that's another uphill struggle yeah. for, for that community um it's like yeah like we still definitely got a long way to go in it because there's daily battles you see protests mm -hmm. about lgbtq and just black protests that was happening in the 60s so it's like like how much have we really progressed if you think about it from that lens yeah. so it's just yeah it's just very you know it's just yeah depending on how you look at it mm -hmm. ultimately yeah no it's definitely sad um and i just feel like it's it's, it's, it's a work in progress. It's not something yeah, that we can yeah, just definitely. change straight away, but there's there's little things we can do. Even us just sitting here now talking about it, someone who's going to watch it can make a change somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, But sweeping it under the rug does nothing. And I find that's what I kind of did for a minute. Like, I feel like I was so... It used to get me so emotional, like, seeing the way black people being treated and seeing, like, the injustices that we face that I just blocked it away. Like I found it was easier for me to just pretend it wasn't happening and just live in my little bubble of mm -hmm. just, just, just me, just yeah. my life. Um, but then I came to realize after a while, that's not gonna get me anywhere because um, at some point I could face something that, some, face something that um, against me because of the color of my skin and I wouldn't know how to handle it because I've spent my whole life blocking it out. Um, and it's real life as well. It's real life and it's something that um, definitely needs to be spoken about and and addressed. Um, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, just us having this conversation, mm -hmm. someone watching it. Hopefully someone watches this and it yeah. opens your eyes. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very important that still just spreading that awareness, letting people know that is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And yeah, hopefully it creates a change, but yeah, definitely is a work in progress 100 yeah. percent like life is just a work in progress isn't it you know whether it's ourselves or where we're working or just just in the day-to-day -day, like just all the work and process whatever we're trying to um work towards still but yeah no that's it though um thank you for joining me uh maya um just let me know if you have any other questions before we kind of head out um, oh, no, I don't have anything no. to say, no. Yeah, oh, just kind of tell the people where they can find you, like your Instagram handle. Oh, um, you can find like me at talkswithgeorge.com. That's T A L K Z W I T H J O R D Z.com. Um, and the Instagram is the same. Um, so, yeah, I would love for you guys to read it and comment and share everything. Um, yeah, still up and coming. So yeah, yeah. I'll look back at this like in years to come. And be like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Just some humble beginnings, yeah. Mm. But uh, can people leave a review as well on the on the blog post? Um, yeah. They can't leave a review, but they can comment. They can comment. Okay. Do you yeah, think yeah. I should add a review bit to it? Um, no, 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 no. I think the comment section is, is good enough. I think that's kind of what I was alluding to anyway. Okay. Just a, like a comment section mm. um, that they can, and they can also follow the the 
blog post as yeah. well. Yeah, because you, you created it through, was it Wix? Um, Wix, what was WordPress. it? WordPress. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. so if um, you subscribe to it, then you get email every time I release a new blog. All right then, so, yeah. cool. Yeah, so yeah, make sure you go do that. There's some A lot of good blog posts will be coming out there soon, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anyway, all right, in a bit. Bye. Take care.